Keep having me over here? Yeah. Okay. So, Darren, tell us about uh, this particular strain of avian influenza that we've been seeing in neighboring states. Sure. So the current avian influenza that is circulating amongst the Midwest is the high path form. It's an H5N2, which means that birds are very susceptible to it. But at this point in time, there's been no reported cases of human illness. So if we look at the Centers for Disease Control, uh, they have stated that we have a very low risk of any transmission occurring between birds and humans of this avian influenza. I'm just going to give like a two or three second pause between mm -hmm. questions. So That's fine. You know it's not because I'm expecting more of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell us what uh, producers in Michigan are doing? Actually, let me back up. How do we know we don't have it in Michigan? So at this point in time, we haven't had any signs that would indicate that we have high path avian influenza in Michigan. Uh, those signs would be an increase in mortality and morbidity within either backyard flocks or the commercial industry, as well as noticing that your birds uh, appear sickly. So um, they're not as active, they're kind of droopy with their featherings, uh, their mannerisms have changed. Typically, once we see these signs appear, we then work with the Diagnostic Center for Population and Animal Health at Michigan State University, and they would actually do a test to confirm if, in fact, we had avian influenza. What are Michigan poultry producers doing to ensure that we don't get it here in Michigan? So at this point in time, to try to ensure that we have um, good biosecurity for our poultry industry here in Michigan, our producers are stepping up their biosecurity plans. They're communicating with allied industry. That could be the nutrition companies, the cage manufacturers, uh, the vaccine and health um, industry and suppliers to make them aware that these are the new standards by which they're allowed to interact with the producers at their facilities. Some of those examples would be um, if it's a feed company, having the tires of the trucks and the undercarriages disinfected and clean before driving onto the property. Uh, making sure that the drivers don't exit trucks. Um, if you are working for a vaccine company or a cage manufacturer, it may mean that in fact, uh, they will meet you off site to talk about business as opposed to having you step foot onto their property. Doing these sorts of precautions help to eliminate the human traffic component and trying to control the other traffic oncoming and offgoing for those respective farms. What should consumers do to make sure that they are safe? So I know a lot of concern has been expressed from consumers about uh, being able to eat meat, uh, turkey and broilers, or to consume the eggs. At this point in time, as long as you are following safe handling guidelines, cooking your meat properly, uh, cooking your eggs when you consume them, there's no need for you to be concerned on eating any sort of poultry or egg products. Okay. And give me the same answer. I keep downloading you. But just tell me what consumers need to do, and let's say they need to follow the same safe handling and preparation practices that they always do. Okay. So go ahead, whenever you're ready. Okay. So yes, there is a concern from the consumer about um, consumption of meat and eggs. And at this point in time, we would tell you the same thing we have in the past, which is continue to safely handle those. Uh, quantities of meat and eggs as well as um, practice. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. We can practice it a few times. Yeah, I just. Um, let's, let's not start with the concern from the consumer. Okay. So just tell me um, maybe consumers don't have a reason to be concerned about this strain of avian influenza, but they should still handle meat, meat okay. and eggs, blah, blah. Okay. So at this point in time, consumers should continue to handle and practice safe food practices with handling of meat and eggs and cooking them before consumption. And if they do that? Uh, and if they do that, there's no concern then that there's any transmission of the, di of the avian influenza from the meat or eggs to the consumer. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. One question. Yeah. And you can look at that. And I don't know if this will fit or not, but why is it important for Michigan State University Extension be involved in this and getting the information out about avian influenza? 
So when we look at uh, the state of Michigan, Michigan Department of Ag and Rural Development, uh, Michigan Department of Natural Resources, USDA Wildlife Services, as well as Michigan State University Extension, work very closely to make sure that we're not only monitoring uh, for the potential of avian influenza entering our state, but then making sure that we can disseminate the information quickly to you as a consumer um, or as a small backyard producer or commercial industry producer uh, to ensure that you have timely information and can continue business as is.